What is up, YouTube? It's Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. This is my Thrawn 101 video. So I did a lot of research for this video. I wanted to explain who is this Thrawn character. Just in case you don't know, or even if you do know, this should give you a little bit more of his back history when it comes to Legends. And that's an important distinction to make right off the bat. We do not know how much of this character they are going to take from the Legends version and carry that over into the new canon version, okay? Now, Timothy Zahn was consulted, not only for obviously the novel that he's writing with, I'm sure he conferred with Pablo Hidalgo and everybody on the story group, but when they decided to bring the character into Rebels, he was there, he saw what they did, he gave notes, and it said that he was really pleased with their interpretation of the character. So let's get right into it. Why is Thrawn such a big deal? Well, he is an of an alien race called the Chiss, okay? Now the Chiss exist in this place called the Unknown Regions, which is almost like a, a far, far reaching part of space out on the outer rim of the galaxy. He was adopted when he was very young by a very high ranking Chiss family. It's a really like Game of Thrones kind of feudalism type thing going on there. He gets adopted by a royal family, a noble house in the Chiss society, and therefore then raises up in the ranks of the military. He's a brilliant strategist, and he actually repels a big imperial force that comes into the unknown regions which was like a special forces of the emperor, okay? And he defeats this force without losing a single ship or person. And the emperor was so impressed that he reaches out to him and they actually start having dialogue. Now, at this point, he's still working for what's called the Expansionary Defense Force, which is like the military of the Chiss. They're battling not only from the inner rim, the empire and rebellion, but they're holding from the things that come from beyond the outer rim, these crazy aliens that constantly come in and try to mess up their territory. So he's working for the Chiss, but he, he wants to work for the empire and the empire, the, especially the emperor himself, wants Thrawn to come and work for him. By the way, his full name is actually Mithran Durudu which is just the, the Chiss name. Now he eventually put, like, condenses that to Thrawn. But if you ever want to go super, super nerdy on your friends, his real name, full name is Mithran Durudu, uh, which is kind of cool. But um, basically, he, in order to get out of the Chiss army and to be able to join the empire, he starts doing ruthless, cutthroat things that the Chiss do not approve of. They eventually hold some kind of a court they find him guilty of all these crimes against the honor and the code of the Chiss, and they kick him out, and then he joins the Empire, okay? As a person in the Empire, he raises all the way up to the rank of Grand Admiral, and it takes a couple different things here and there to do that. Obviously, it's a long and hard journey for him, and something that's really cool about him and just in general with the canon, one of the ways that Timothy Zahn explained how this massive character was never seen in any of the films was basically talking about how the Empire was incredibly racist towards aliens and actually sexist too. They don't like women or aliens, but mostly aliens. And so that was the reason that you never saw him on screen was because there were so few aliens, not only in the Imperial ranks, but especially as you got higher, higher up, there were fewer, 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 which is also like a crazy testament to just how smart and sharp and strategic Thrawn was in order to get to the rank that he f eventually did achieve, okay? Now, within, uh, si basically this is what happens at the end. So at, there's that 15 year gap. I've talked about this in other videos, but there's a 15 year gap where we were not getting any new Star Wars canon content. There were no movies. Timothy Zahn steps up to the plate, creates the heir to the Empire. I'll show you these books right here. Uh, these are the books. These are the books that I'm talking about. Uh, I've read them. They're really, really awesome. I suggest reading them, especially with the new canon version coming out. Uh, but it all started with this book right here. A lot of people remember seeing this book when it first popped off, and people loved it and checked it out. And it was like a sequel 
to Return of the Jedi. It was like that story was advancing, the Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, the Emperor's Maybe Gone sort of story. Now, the way that they explain it in the Legends canon is that he's in the unknown regions during the Battle of Endor, so he's not killed like the Emperor or Vader. When he comes back, obviously the Empire is in complete disarray, and he brings everything together, starts consolidating the power and rebuilding the Empire. Within six months of coming back, he takes back over half of the galaxy. That's how crazy good this guy is at what he does. Now, his technique, as far as learning and profiling his enemy, is really what set him apart from the other villains in the series. Thrawn was a student of history, philosophy, and art, especially art. Most people that only know basic level knowledge of Thrawn will tell you he was the guy that would study artwork of cultures in order to basically psychologically profile their own limitations, weaknesses, and strengths in order to take them over. Very, very fascinating stuff. Early on in Heir to the Empire, he is in a room with his private art collection studying about the species and the plants that he wants to conquer. Very, very cool stuff. He is almost like a Sun Tzu or FBI profiler type character. Gets in the head, in the spiritual um, state of mind of his enemy in order to better know how to defeat them. Very, very cool stuff. In the book himself, there's something really, really important that he did in order to utilize the powers of a cloned Jedi named Joris Kaboth. Now, this is the guy on the cover of Heir to the Empire who's got the stuff coming out of his fingers. Um, he was insane, um, but very, very powerful. And he had these lizards that were called the uh, Usalamari. Uh, I've heard it pronounced a whole bunch of different ways, but the Usalamari. They're basically these little lizards that repel the force. So he would have them on his shoulder and on his chairs. That way, the Joris character, the clone Jedi, would have no ability to influence him or use his force powers when he was around, okay? So he got this guy to come in and work for him and utilize his power in order to continue to build the strength of the new empire and expand and take over planets. Now, he was eventually killed by one of his own guards, uh, very much so like a Julius Caesar type moment. Um, E2, you crazy alien guard, you know, sort of thing. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen with the new canon version of Thrawn, but that is just a little bit about Thrawn who he is, what he does, and why he is such a badass. Um, and just let me know in the comment section below. What do you think of this character? Did you learn something? Did I miss something? Please let me know. Um, and what do you think they're going to carry over from Legends to the new canon? I'm very interested to see how they do this force repellent thing because I think it's a very important part of the story and a, a, a big reason as to why Thrawn was able to be such a player in the world where there are so many Sith Lords and Jedis in the expanded universe he was able to be a player because of the knowledge he had of these little lizards in fact in the Rebels trailer when he turns around you see those statues of those lizards on his shoulder so to speak juxtaposed against him just like they were in the books and that's a little hint Dave Filoni said that's just a little nod of the hat to the fans that know what that means but Filoni also said they're not going to put those lizards into canon because they don't really work in the way that they understand the canon force to work because they're alive and everything that's alive has to do with the force but maybe they'll introduce some artificial way or like a crystal or a magic or something that can repel the force I think that would be really really Cool. All right, time to check that nerd card. This one's going to be Expanded Universe or Legend, so it's a bit of a deep cut. But there is a technique. This is what the question has to do with. There is a technique, a force technique, that Thrawn basically reasoned that the Emperor was using during the Battle of Endor and used often as he was sitting and watching a battle in order to help the communication and the strength of his army defeat uh, better, larger forces. This technique was used by Joris Kaboth under the direction of Thrawn in the Heir to the Empire series in order to continue to advance their plan. 
So what is the name of that technique that force users can use in a battle in order to basically shift the odds in their favor when it comes to star fighting and those sort of things. Answer the question in the comments section below. Like the video if you thought it was awesome. Share this video with some people that want to know a little bit more about Thrawn. I'm sure everybody's interested at this point. And as always, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day. See ya!